Hi there, this is Unmesh from Piximperfect and today we're going to learn how to create this really cool Anaglyph 3D effect in Photoshop. Now what is Anaglyph 3D? Well, do you remember those early 3D movies that we used to have? It had a separation of red and cyan and the images used to look strange. But when you used to wear those glasses with red on one side and cyan on the other side, the images used to look as if it was coming out of the screen. We also used to have those 3D books. It used to come up with those paper glasses that we used to wear and the images looked as if it was coming out of the paper. So. We will create that effect today in Photoshop. It is very easy if you understand the concepts. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are on the Wikipedia page of Anaglyph 3D and the first sentence is very crucial for us to understand. Let me read that for you. So Anaglyph 3D is the name given to stereoscopic 3D effect achieved by means of encoding each eye's image, each eye's image, right, using filters of different, usually chromatically opposite colors, typically red and cyan. Let me repeat the last phrase for you. Usually chromatically opposite. Focus on that. And the other one is red and cyan. So we know that red is the opposite of cyan and both of them are chromatically opposite. Now let's get back to Photoshop. So here we are back in Photoshop and now we know that we just have to create two separations, red and cyan. That's it, right? So simply make two copies of the background left. To do that, press Ctrl or Command J twice. Ctrl or Command J. One more time. Now we have two copies. So name that red and name that cyan. And we know that in the red layer, only red channel will show up. And in the cyan layer, anything but red will show up. Make sense? No? Let me make it sense for you. Just double click on the right hand side of the layer where it says red. Okay. Now we just want the red channel. So turn off the green and the blues. We know that image is comprised of red, green and blue. So just turn off the green and blue. We just have red. Hit OK. Now come back to the cyan channel, come to the cyan channel and double click on the right hand side of the layer. Now we don't have anything like cyan. What do we do? What is cyan? Anything but red. That's what cyan is. So all we simply need to do is to turn off the red. So have a look here. It's just cyan. Hit OK. Remember the statement. Both are chromatically opposite, red and cyan. So that's why when we turn off the red, we have cyan. And on the other layer, we just have the red. Easy. So now we don't see the separation. How can we see the separation? Easy. Just separate them. So select any one of these layers, red or cyan. I'm going to choose red and just separate it with the move tool, just like this. And it is done, right? Very easy to do. However, it doesn't look very interesting. I just did this simple stuff so that you can understand the concepts. So this is the basic concepts. Now it is time for us to really dive in into the house of filters. All right. So let's go ahead and delete both of these and start all over again. Now this time what you have to do, make a copy of the background layer and this is called the base. Press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of this. No, I'm not talking about base and the treble, that kind of base, but base, B-A-S-E. Why base? Well, any changes in the filters that we're going to make in the base will be reflected in both of those red and cyan layers. How? By converting it into a smart object. So right click and choose convert to smart object. Okay. Once you do that, just double click on the thumbnail. It will open up another document of just that layer. All right. Now any adjustment, any filter, any stuff that you have to do, do it just inside of this document. So let's go ahead and create curves. Now this is completely upon you. Just go creative, go berserk, go crazy on it. So apply any kind of filter that you like, any adjustment layer, everything is under your control. So I will go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer and I'm just playing with it. There is no hard and fast rule that you have to do this and that. Just play with it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and decrease the highlights. So just take it down just like that until it looks okay. And then let's apply a color lookup table. So click on the adjustment layer icon again and choose color lookup. And let's choose something like foggy night. It looks amazing, but I think it's too dark. So I'm going to go back inside of the curves and just decrease the darkness or just simply brighten it. Now it pretty much looks fine. Now what we have to do, the hair doesn't look right. So let's create one more curves adjustment layer. We need to add some shine to the hair. Just take it all up just like that. Okay. Now click the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. This inverts the mask. 
turns it completely black. Now take the brush and just dab in into the areas that are shining or areas which are facing the direction of light. Okay, flow and opacity at 100. Just click, click here. Do you want that area to shine? Let's get that area to shine, this area to shine. Now this is completely upon you. Just, just play with it. This area, just collapse it for a second. This area is good. That area sh should, should shine. All right. Looks pretty good. Now double click on the right hand side of the layer and we will delete it from the dark areas of the image by taking the slider of the underlying layer from left to right, just like this. Now it's very harsh. So hold the Alt or Option. Click on the slider. It separates the slider. Now just separate it for a smoother transition. Now let's erase it from the skin. We don't want it on the skin. So go back to the mask, take the brush and just make sure the foreground color is black this time because we want to hide it. Just hide it from the skin and it looks great. All right. Control the opacity. I think it's too much. So I'll just go ahead and control the opacity to something like this. Now let's go more intense into it. Let's create some shine if you want to. So let's create one more curves adjustment layer just like this. Take it all up. Looks interesting. Double click on the right hand side of the layer, right? Take the underlying layer slider from left to right, just like this to create that shine. Hold the Alt or Option. Click on the button or the slider. It's called the slider actually. Now take it to the right. Now this is an interesting effect. I can play with it as much as you like to control the shine. Now it's too much. I will decrease what? The opacity. Just like so now i think that the contrast is a little less so let's go ahead and create one more curves adjustment layer i'm just playing with it guys you can do it with just one curves adjustment layer that's totally upon you so i'll just brighten it up just like that and darken it up a little bit like that i think it's shining too much so i will decrease the opacity even more and control it i like the shine on the head and stuff but I think the nose is too much shining. So I'll just go to the mask, take the brush, make sure the foreground color is black, paint on the nose with black. There you have it. Have a look before, after. It looks pretty much better. Now I'll go to the mask of this one as well and paint black on the nose because it's shining too much. There you go. We have that. Now what to do next? How about adding a gradient? Wouldn't that be nice? So let's go ahead and add some gradients. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose gradient and black is not exciting but you can add that. That's totally upon you. I'll just single click here and choose this orange to violet. And I don't want the violet part of it. So I'll just decrease the opacity of this one to zero. All I did, I clicked at the top and decreased the opacity. Hit OK. I like this. I really, really like this. Hit OK. And you can just adjust the way you like it. Let's collapse it. It's disturbing. Let's set the angle to something like this. This is great. Now you can also move it on the image while the gradient fill options are open dialog box actually you can actually move it to your liking this is okay let's take the angle just like this i like it hit okay now let's change the blend mode to something more interesting like overlay no overlay i don't like overlay how about hard light wow hard light does look very interesting now let's get back to the properties by double clicking on the symbol and move it a little bit to the left just like this and we can increase the scale if you want to. I kind of like, this is too harsh. I'm going to stay with 100. 100 was fine for me. And just move it the way you like it. And get the angle the way you like it. All right, hit OK once you're satisfied. Let's decrease the opacity. I think it's too much. OK, now to go with red, we need a blue shadow because the shadow, it, it's kind of grayish. Let's add a little bit blue to it. So let's get down. We want to add blue under the gradient. So let's go ahead and create one more curves adjustment layer. And let's go to the blue channel and let's add some blues to the shadows just like so. Okay. And take away the blues from the highlights. Just like so. Let's collapse that. And there you go. Let's have a look at the before and after. So here's the before. Here is the after complete transformation. Now, I think the gradient is still too much. Let's go ahead and decrease the values. It's fine. Now, once you're done with the filter and everything, you can change everything later though. Press Control or Command S to save it. Or just simply go to File and then click on Save. We already pressed Control or Command S, so that's why it's grayed out. 
All right, now once you save it, you can actually close it. You will see that it updates in the original document. Isn't that cool? Now let's turn the canvas to black. It, the gray was kind of distracting. Now once we have the base, make two copies of the base. Press Ctrl or Command J twice. Now this one is red, just like the previous one. And this one is cyan. Double click on the right hand side of the red. You already know what to do. Just keep the red, hit OK. Double click on the right hand side of the cyan. Just remove the red and you're good to go. Now all you have to do, just separate it. Let's go to the red and using the move tool, let's separate it the way you like it. If you want to separate the cyan to the left a little bit, you can do whatever you want. And now we have that effect. And here's an interesting thing. These are simply copies of the base smart objects. So all of these layers, the base, the red and the cyan, all of these three are linked to one document. So any changes you make to just one, for example, if you want to make a change to something, you want to darken it, just double click on the thumbnail of the base. And then when you, for example, let's add a curves adjustment layer and you want to darken it something like this and press Control or Command S, just save it and see it update in all the three. Once you return back to the original document, have a look. All of these three have been updated. So let's go ahead and delete that back. In that document, the base PSB, let's delete the curves and then save that again by pressing Control or Command S. See, it will update again. All of those three will update. Why? Because all of those three are linked to one document. And that's the reason we created the base and converted that into a smart object. So let's go get back to this one. Isn't that interesting? And now to top it off, you can also add one more curves adjustment layer at the top. But uh, instead of doing that, what I would suggest is that going to the base and then making an adjustment. But we can do that no problem at all. Something like this. That is a little interesting. So what you can do, you can keep the gaps low, just like so. Let's get back to the reds. You can keep the gaps very low, a little slight change just like this. Or it looks interesting as well. Or you can keep, keep the gaps very high, just like this, moving the reds a little bit more to the right and cyan a little bit to the left. So that creates different kinds of effects totally depending upon what effect you are looking for. Guess what guys, you can apply all of these effects and more by using amazing actions by Envato. And action is not just for applying effects, it's a great resource for learning. Actually, I myself learned this effect from an action. Let me show you. So if you don't see the actions right in here, go to Windows and then make sure actions is clicked on, actions is checked. Okay, so I have this complete set of actions and this is the anaglyph default, just play it, all right? So it will do some work, do it automatically and have a look, the same thing is there. The base, the red, the blue, it's not actually blue, it's cyan and you can move it the way you like it, you understand the concept, you can move the red, you can move the cyan to the other side, right? So this was the default stuff. So let's go ahead and delete that and there are a lot of custom ones as well and you can see what effect each of them has been applied with. So for example, there's this black and white, there's this strong anaglyph. So let's choose this one and just hit play, a random one. And let's have a look at what it does, right? It's an interesting effect. Let's open that up and see what it has done. It has applied a vignette kind of effect at the top as well. And have a look, if I double click here, the same thing, it has the same base thing. It has, it has been named differently, but look, two color lookup tables and one gradient fill. So same stuff, if you wanna make any changes to that, you already know what to do, create a curves adjustment layer, just like this, just play with it and make any changes that you like and save it, Control or Command S. If you wanna make it black and white, you can add one more hue saturation adjustment layer very simply. So these are all customizable actions. And as I said, it's a great way to learn Photoshop, not just apply those filters, but learn Photoshop's and those effects as well. Just save it and it will automatically update in this one. Isn't that exciting? Envato Elements for me personally has proved to be a great resource, not just for stock photos and graphics and stuff, but also for learning Photoshop as well. Through Photoshop actions, tutorials that the website has, it is a very interesting place where you can get access unlimited access actually to more than 500,000 assets right from Photoshop actions, graphics, images, stock photos 
And there's tons of stuff. Even it has background textures and patterns, a complete category for that. So check that out. You can subscribe to Envato Elements through piximp.com slash Envato. And if you subscribe through this link and send me a screenshot of your purchase, I will provide you complete access to Piximperfect Photoshop assets as well for free. So that's how to create Anaglyph 3D effect very easily. Just keep in mind reds and cyans. On one layer you have the red and on the other layer you have the cyan. For the red, just double click on the right hand side of the layer. Just keep the red on, turn the green and the blue off for the cyan. Keep the red off and the rest on. And that's pretty much it. Separate them and you're pretty much good to go. You can apply some filters to just enhance it. That's totally upon you. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us an like and also do not forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss a thing. I'll see you guys in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Thank you so much for watching.